Hi, this is Darcy Small from OnlinePCWizard.com. What I'm going to do today is walk you through an installation of Debian 6, that's the Squeeze Edition. And we're going to do it inside of VMware's workstation. So we're going to create a VMware machine. So, let's go and create our guest machine now. Create new virtual machine. This time we'll go as typical. Next and here we look for the installer ISO now I have my installer ISO already downloaded and saved so let's go and pull it up here it is now since I'm using a 32-bit PC I'm going to use a 32-bit edition which is going to be the i386 in your case or whosoever if you're using a 64-bit machine then you'll have to use the AMD 64 um, okay let's go to next Linux um, this is not a major prerequisite but it doesn't have the Debian 6 but let's just go with Debian 5 We'll change the name afterwards. Okay. Debian 6 32 bit. Okay. Let's say about. We can change this afterwards, but maybe. Let's see. 25 gigabytes. That's more than enough. And let's store the virtual disk as a single file. Because we're not going to be moving this from off of the server anytime soon. Let's go with next. And let's just double check the hardware. Okay, our memory is 512. That's enough for now. And as you can see, I'm running with 2 gigabytes of memory on my server. And since it's a 32-bit machine, I can't really do much better. And let's just leave it at 1. 1 core. Because there's only one processor you, I have. And... Okay. Sound card printer. Let's take that off. Let's play okay okay everything looks fine now let's click finish just remove that that as well and the reason why this is happening is because I'm actually using XRDP the XRDP and this is basically remote desktop protocol but I'm using it over implementation of Linux so I'm using a my Microsoft Windows 7 laptop to access my Debian server over remote desktop and it's called the XRDP you can check it out as well but I can't change it to the UK keyboard and it's going to come up as the US keyboard but that's no problem for now we can change that afterwards okay let me just maximize this Okay. Let's go with a normal install. I'm going to go with English because obviously I speak English. And the layout is going to be the country, United Kingdom, British English. You would put the languages to suit your specification. And here now this part is going pretty speedily. Now what we're going to do is we're not going to install a X server. What we're going to do is just have almost a beer, a beer bone installation. Let's give it a host name. Deb six V 
the um, Deb six VM one six thirty two VM one. Okay, that's going to be the host name of the computer, and the domain name. Let's. I'm going to give myself a domain of. Let me see. Let's put home dot lan for now. Or actually, let me give it a more personal touch. PCWiz dot lan. Okay, now here we are. You need to collect. Sorry, you need to type in your root password, which is somewhat synonymous with the administrator account for Windows machines. Now this is the account that has full control over the system and there's only one root account or should I say there should only ever be one root account. So I'm going to go in and go ahead and type a password. You need to remember this password. Then go to continue. It will ask you for the password again. It needs to verify it just to make sure that you type the correct thing. Continue okay the full name for the new user I'm going to type in my name oops okay I'm going to leave the username for your account as Darcy actually I'm going to change this one let me change it to you can have whatever name you want for the account as long as you remember it Continue. now I need to create a password for the user that I just create that I just created so let me go ahead and type this password bearing in mind that this password is different from the root password that you just typed okay so right now we have two users set up and two passwords one is the root user and we've put in a root password for that and the second one is online PC wizard and we just gave a different password now for this tutorial I'm gonna go with the guided so we're gonna use the entire disk there are other ones that you can do with logical volume manager and you can even encrypt it as well but that's outside the scope of this tutorial right now okay here it's asking me to choose a partitioning scheme and it's all files in one partition that recommended for new users but actually we're gonna push it a little bit further and we're going to use the one at the bottom a separate partition for home which is where by default your users directories your users home directory stays so it will be slash home slash online PC wizard or slash home slash whoever we're gonna put each of these in its separate partition and I'll tell you later I'll tell you why later so we'll go with the one at the bottom so instead of having one partition we have four partitions right now now actually I want to change these from ext3 to ext4 file systems and let's see if I can change them now remember using the VM the VMware workstation at the beginning it went to prompt us to choose a name or choose an installation type and I choose Linux and then I went to Debian 5 by default Debian 5 does make your install as an ext3 but with Debian 6 if you're actually running the full Debian 6 installer on say a barebone system an actual system and not any virtual machine it would usually install as an ext4 file system but let's see if I can change that just hit enter and here we have use as let me see I'm gonna hit enter and we just come down and you're going to choose ext4 journal in file system this is a newer file system to the or I should say as a maybe you can look at it as an upgrade for, to the ext3 it has more features and what's not and you can google that google its benefits and google the exact ext4 journal in file system 
when you do have a chance. Let's get done. And I'm going to go through each of these and change these to ext4. Here we go. You can leave them if you choose to, but just so that we're all on the same page, I'd recommend going with the newer one. We will leave swap as swap because swap is just swap. Okay. I know it's a little drawn out, but okay. Okay, so that's it. Okay, we go down to finish partitioning and write changes to this. Okay, we have a root partition. Let's just double check it. There's a primary partition, 349 megabytes. That's enough to install Grub and boot the system. Then we have a user, it's a logical, var, logical, or swap one gigabyte. We're, we've currently allocated to the virtual machine 512 megabytes. So by default, the system tries to use twice the amount of space then you have memory. So if you have one gig of memory, the system or the installer will automatically try to allocate two gigabytes of swap space. Um, temp, 398, and our home partition, 13.1 gigabytes. The reason why the home partition is the biggest partition is because this is, as I told you before, this is where the home directories usually are allocated to. So my Online PC Wizards home directory will be in slash home slash online PC wizard and that's where most of the users store all of their files and what's not. So let's go down to finish petitioning. And yes, we want to, we want to accept these changes. Okay. We'll just leave it and it should do its magic. bear in mind and take as a note that it would be highly recommended that your mach should I say highly recommended for this tutorial it would make stuff a lot easier if your machine via the VMware workstation or the VMware player via the VMware host machine has an internet connection so if you have an internet connection during the installation we can just pull down all our updates and what's not from the from the internet from ftp.uk debian.org or ftp.us debian.org don't worry if you don't have internet access while installing this machine I will still go in, go into the etc configuration file and show you where in the sources.lst that you can sorry sorry sources.list that you can enable or add the necessary repositories okay we're 50 we're 52 percent already it's going quite quickly Now the way I want to do this system is after we set this up, you depends on which machine you're actually installing this onto. Bear in mind that if you wanted to install the Debian 6 onto an actual physical machine instead of in a virtual environment, it would pretty much be the same thing just to obviously cut out the creation of the virtual machine but this installer that we're actually going through it would be the same thing as if you boot your boot your DVD media or your USB media whichever media you have that has the installation ISO or the dot image file or whatever it is you may be trying to boot from